Great to YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. It seems the postman knows when I'm abroad. Always when I come back I find a lot of packages on my table. So let's start to unpackage them. At the end this video was about 40 minutes and this is way too long. This is why I decided to separate it in two parts. One you will see now and the next on Sunday. I think I know what it is. Two boards. This one in, is an ESP32 board with a battery and also a OLED display. So and also charging. So this board has more or less everything. A battery, ESP32 charging circuit and an OLED. Quite an interesting board and it has an on off switch and also enable and boot. Let's look what's in the second one. Looks similar but not the same. Has also an OLED but the OLED is 90 degrees turned and it has a small switch here which is directional. It should have four different directions. The board is not an ESP32, it's still an ESP8266. Also the charging circuit which is probably the same or at least similar of course this board has much more pins. The ESP32 of course has only a few pins and it seems that this one has really not a lot. It has AD, D3, D4, D8, D9, 10 and finished. I have to check if something is lacking. Now let's check first with the ESP8266 board whether they have a sketch on it and really they have one but it does not react to this to the switch here and now I discovered also why we only have very few pins here we need some pins for the OLED and we need some pins for for the switches so I'm not sure if this is a very interesting board for projects other than if you need just an interaction between um, maybe a switch or two and an OLED. It will be a very special board I assume. And check the ESP32 board. The plus is always marked very well. And I also see here that it, the OLED is cracked. So something happened during um, the transportation. And unfortunately it is also broken. The OLED is also broken here. I think I have to ask for a refund of this board. The packaging was probably not very good for this um, delicate OLED display. In the meantime I found out that uh, this display is connected to pin 5 and 4 not as usual to 21 and 22 on the ESP32 but it does not show anything so this um, OLED must be defective. The rest works and the ESP is also revision 1. The next one is a big one. Plenty of stuff in it. A 
really plenty of stuff. We more sports, we more sports, all different shields, but these are not the normal shields, these are the new shields, and it's a whole selection of shields. A relay, temperature, humidity sensor, LED, uh, neopixels, another temperature sensor, an ESP32, and even uh, quite a large OLED. Yeah, this is uh, probably 0.96 or even 1.5 inch OLED display. Also in the same format, in this X shield format. And here it is a push button, a nicely looking push button. This is also an interesting thing. I do not know how, whether I will use it or whether I need it really, but I thought it is really a nice idea and I wanted to show it to you. It is a ESP32 and it is a sensor for plants where you can measure humidity of your plants and also of the environment, the surrounding. Also with the battery, I think this can give a nice project looking at the deep sleep capabilities of the ESP32. And I like also that the sensor here is completely covered, so I assume that we will not have a lot of um, corrosion, but on the other hand, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if this will work. From the past, I know these. Humidity sensors for plant, and they have open traces here, just thin traces, and I read that these are completely corroded after a very short period of time. And this one seems really covered with uh, some, some sort of color paint, something. We will see how they work. But of course here we will need a 3D printed case, I'm sure. But unfortunately my 3D printer does not work for the moment and I do not find the error, so I ordered a new one, the new Prusa MK3 and I hope it will be delivered probably as a Christmas gift. This one also has a small sketch on it, a Hello World sketch and this DHT sensor is connected to pin 22. And all these parts have some LED, this for example means that the battery is fully charged and here we have a blinking LED which we can use for our purpose. In the meantime I found the inventor of this high grow plants monitor, it is Luca Fabri and I also found his GitHub account. I tried out the sketch, I had to change a few things to make it run and now I want to test it of course. The ambient temperature readings seem to work. It's already autumn here, so the flowers are no more very nicely looking in the outside. And now I put in this high grow stuff and we check how the measurement reads. And now I water the plant, simulate it. Usually we don't do it this way here in Switzerland. We have larger devices. We will have a drunk plant afterwards. Now we have to check if something happened. And the value seems to go down from 7 or 800 to about 400. So it seems also to work. There is another interesting fact. The normal humidity sensors work with uh, analog 
LM393 comparator. So they measure the resistance between the two pins here when they are plugged in the water. And our new device does not work like that. It has an NE555 timer here. So this must be something capacitive, which explains that we do not need any contact here. This is a really th interesting thing. I have to do a little bit more investigation in this device here in a other video. And also in the mailbag, I got this interesting device from Xiaomi. It looks a little bit similar to our device. Of course, it's smaller and it has also contacts here, but it has the same purpose. It also is a humidity sensor for plants, but it has a Bluetooth chip in it. And I bought this not especially because I'm interested in this plant watering stuff, but because I'm interested in the Bluetooth. And um, you will see in one of the next videos what I do with learning how to use BLE on the ESP32. The next one is quite heavy for this small package. Regular viewers of my channel know exactly what this is. This is a selection of different load cells. The selection contains 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg, 5 kg and 10 kg. So all the different loads and lots of cables of course. But each has this typical 4 wire interface with black and red and white and green. We know this. I link the video in the description where we built a device for our nice cat Dishka. The next one is tiny and very light. <laughs> very, very small chips. These are actually OPA2365A and these are quite good operational amplifiers and we need this because uh, my helper has uh, to do some op amp stuff uh, to learn how they work. Maybe we will show you once also a small tutorial about op amps and they are quite good and cheap op amps. I ordered op amps from TI and op amps from a unknown source and we will also compare the two whether they are similar or whether they are really uh, fake because the price difference is quite high between the original TI and the no names. Next one is, is loosely packaged and is another ESP32 board. I was asked by some viewers about the boards of Banggood so I ordered their selection and I will test them and compare them with uh, the others I already have. They seem to be very similar than one or two I already have with a AMS1117 with a serial to USB and with and with about 30 pins. They have also the two boot and enable buttons which are very handy for programming. It is the brand name of Banggood here Geek right or something like that. I don't know how to, pr to pronounce that. If we actually look at it, we see that it is a do-it development kit, but it has now also a Revision 1 chip on the board. Next one. A small board. Also an ESP32, but it has MicroPython on it and it is named Revision 1. So this uh, becomes now more and more important, maybe also because of my videos that people look at this revision 
thing but it is a Lolin 32 Lite. Let's look what it is. Even this one seems to have some sort of battery cable here or battery connector. It has an CH340 USB to serial and if we boot it up it behaves completely different. You see this dialog here and for example we can now and we have also to have here carriage return otherwise it does not work and we get in now the MicroPython on ESP32 and some help text so they really included MicroPython and I'm interested in this MicroPython because uh, we are currently doing tests now with uh, Mongoose OS which uh, uses JavaScript as a higher language or a reasonable high language to program ESP32s and I want also to use MicroPython and compare it a little bit with the Arduino IDE to find out which is easier for projects or probably which is better to be used for this project or for that project because I personally think that uh, C++ is probably disappearing a little bit in the future if you look at the modern languages this is JavaScript and Python which are the winners on, um, on other architectures and maybe it will also win on the ESP32 we will see because I have now plenty of ESP32 boards, I have to bring order in this collection. This is why I took the list of video number 159 and enhanced it with all the boards I got in this mailbag. I had to create a new overview with all the different boards, with all the different pins and some other properties of the boards. And uh, I will put the link in to the description where you find this overview. Like that you can check for example if you want to have a breadboard friendly board or if you want one with a battery or if you want to one with only a few pins or with lots of pins so you can select and here also you see which pins are lacking for example and if you need one for your project you probably choose another board. This is the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two will follow on Sunday morning as usual. Bye.